in the flat and has it complete to Brian Roach. It was funny what Bobby Ross said yesterday. He says, you know, I always like to establish the run. The heck with that stuff. We're going to come out winging it. Well, and I think they have to against this team. They didn't, they weren't able to do it in the first game and keep the pace going. They lost a big lead. But now they're getting some good blocking up front. Look at that. They just stone everybody at the line of scrimmage. Jumpy Gethers going absolutely nowhere. Stan Humphrey's very decisive on where he wants to go to the football. Fletcher is in as the running back on first and ten for the Chargers. Short set. And complete to Coleman after the 37 chased out of bounds by Braxton. Mike, I like what San Diego's doing is they're throwing a lot of different looks at Denver, and they're they're really giving them a dose of their own medicine. That's what Denver likes to do on offense. They like to spread things out and make people try and find matchups. Ralph Regan says, hey, look, I'm coming out throwing. We normally want to run first, throw second, not in this game. We're going to set up our running game by throwing the ball. So far, he has. Bradley, no place to go. Brought down maybe a half yard shy of the line of scrimmage. Michael Lotus, number 97, the former Buffalo Bill, made the tackle. Greg Robinson's defense is number one against the run in the NFL. Offensively, they run the ball better than anybody. Number that's, one. That's the way you get the championships. But what you'll notice about Robinson's defensive safeties, Atwater 27 and Braxton 34, they will be up around the line of scrimmage making a lot of tackles. Which is why you have to throw the ball to beat Denver. Third and five, Humphreys with a little roll. Another look right through the hands of intercepted. Picked off by Corey James, the rookie. That appeared to go right through the hands of Tony Martin. Merry Christmas. That's about the only way. Corey James winds up with an interception that absolutely goes right through Charlie Jones' hands. Oh, it was Charlie Jones, not Tony Martin. The second interception early for San Diego. They had six turnovers in that game. I hate to say this, but nothing's changed since we've left. And Stan Humphreys is just not a happy camper. Davis the running back. No way with time. Dumps it over the middle. Davis made the catch and fumbled the football. Now they rule it incomplete. Kurt Govea made the hit, and Humphrey's on the phone upstairs. I'd be curious to see this one again, because remember, you have to catch it and get both feet on the ground to have it considered possession. John looks out to the right, then this comes back. Now, he, that's a catch. That's, that's, catch. A, that's a bad call by the official. Watch this. You're going to see both his feet on the ground. Feet are on the ground. He's got possession of the ball. Nobody blows a whistle. That's a bad call. They go back to the ground. Davis trying to pad that lead on Barry Sanders. Gets maybe a yard out of this one. Submarine by Terrence Shaw, who came up quickly from the corner. Up by number Shaw. Sixth round draft choice out of Georgia. Played junior college ball. Just uh, a, a nice kid who has had a marvelous first two years in the NFL, the odds on choice to win the NFL rushing time. And battled through the migraines, so, you know, continues to try and figure out a way to make it work for him. Third and eight. No way with time, and he's got a completion near a first down. And it is a first down. The catch by Anthony Miller, his 54th of the season. Mike, one of the things that you know, John told us last night we had a chance to visit with him is what this offense does now. It allows him with the running game to get the matchups he wants one-on-one -on -one in the passing game. Here he's going to be out against Darian Gordon, number 21. Miller's the inside receiver. He just presses a little inside and just floats on out. You see McCaffrey clear the inside. Now Miller in the open field is as quick and as good as anybody. Miller, the former charger, picked up in 94. First down, Denver. Davis. Hit as he crossed the 15 to the 14. John Perella on the tackle. And John Elway has just hit 45,000 yards. Only the third player ever to do it. He and Marino and Tarkenton sharing virtually all of the NFL records. There's the Marino company. already over 51,000. And remarkably, none has ever won the big prize, the it, ring for a championship. But you know, I think part of, they've been such a big part of the offense, you can't win championships without running the football. 
Absolutely. Play action by Elway. Under pressure. Carswell, the tight end. Close to a first down. Lou Bush and Harrison combined to take him out of bounds. Shannon Sharp not starting the night because of a slight ankle problem. Of course, he's had a marvelous year. Over 1,000 yards. There's Shannon Sharp. 6% body fat. i got to be honest with you. I'm sitting on more than that. <laughs> he came in with four. He's actually put some on since he, this season. In training camp, he was down to four. He must have had a Snickers sometime during the season. <laughs> Marco Coleman is the injured player for San Diego. They came in without Chris Mim, Sean Lee, and Reuben Davis, who all underwent some kind of arthroscopic surgery this week. So they had one, two, three, four, five linemen. That's all, five. But the other thing is if Coleman can't play for a while, which it looks like they're just cleaning out some dirt in his eye, that would take the entire starting front four and have them not be available tonight. But it looks like just an eye problem. The thing about Shannon Sharp, Mike, that I found so interesting, he's never played 16 games in his seven years. This was going to be the first season that he was going to have a chance to start and play every game. He wasn't able to do it. And, of course, if, Mike the sat game, him down. if the game had meant something to Denver, they would all be in there. Elway expected to play maybe 20 plays. And Coleman looks like he's going to be all right. First and goal from the seventh. Elway throws to the goal line. No signal is a touchdown. It will mean bar just short. Rod Smith made the catch. This is a great adjustment by Rod Smith. John's going to turn his hips. Watch when he turns his hips. As soon as he gets those hips turned, the power he puts on it. And really, Rod Smith just absolutely protects himself. Watch the hips. Right there. See how they get turned? That's the way you can make throws accurately. Is once you get your hips and shoulders pointed where you want to go, the ball will go there. Second and goal, Terrell Davis on the verge of a Bronco record for touchdown. Will he get it? He will. Touchdown. Terrell Davis with his 13th rushing, 15th total touchdown of the season. Both franchise records. Brian Habib, number 75. Roderick Thompson, number 76 on the right side. They're just going to clear a path. The big guys just turn, and there's the hole. Say, once you get the big guys and their butts facing in a sideways direction, that's a place to run. That's like a big old swing gate. Elam for the point after. He hasn't missed all year. He's 46 of 46. Two San Diego interceptions have given Denver 10 points here in the first quarter. Chargers still 8.20 to go first quarter. And Terrell Davis studying the pictures from upstairs. He has set a franchise record with 15 total touchdowns surpassing Anthony Miller and Sammy Winder. Elam getting leg weary in the first quarter. Coleman this time from the five. This will be an illegal block in the back. Horrible defensive lineman injured on the sideline. Last series they had Patrick Sapp, a linebacker, defensive end. Chargers go back to work at their own 11. Bradley. After the 16-yard line, right now, if you're Stan Humphrey, you're a little afraid to throw the football. He's thrown it perfectly you, you, so You know, far. i got to be honest with you, Mike. No. I, if you really go the other way, you know, so now you're just, you're gritting your teeth. You're getting <laughs> madder and madder. Now you're even going to try and throw it, make it easier for these guys to catch. You figure, okay, one runs a bad route. One's got alligator arms. I'm going to hit him in the numbers with it if I have to. Go, 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 go. Seven plays, two interceptions so far for San Diego. Humphrey, short set, goes from the flat incomplete. Really, his first bad pass intended for Andre Coleman. I don't think he was real fond of that route either. Well, I, I think the receiving core has been a problem for Stan the entire year. First of all, it's young. You got Charlie Jones, Brian Stills, Andre Coleman really wasn't expected to play there. Right. Tony Martin really is the only guy that had experience and had a Pro Bowl year. 
But that's, I think, been the main problem for Stan all year has been communication to his wide receivers. And he lost out for Papuna, who was one of his favorite targets, the tight end of his hurt earlier. Four-man rush, good protection. Flag is down. The pass incomplete to Jones, who was open over the middle. Now we'll check the marker. They got to come up with a new signal for that. Yeah. Rod Smith waits for Darren Bennett to punt. Beauty. All the way back to the 26. Smith looks for a block in the corner. Marked out of bounds at the 44. A 19-yard return after a punt of 57. Still 10-0 Bronco. Kirk Cavea put it as well as anybody. We had a chance to talk to him on Friday. He said, you know something? These are job auditions. When you're not looking at the postseason, this is a job audition for a lot of these guys. And it's not going well so far either. <laughs> Elway dumps it short. McCaffrey with the catch. John Elway, over the years, his production has increased. Ten years under Dan Reeves, 83 to 92, less than six touchdowns, 16 touchdowns per season. Under Phillips, in a couple of years, it went over 20, but under Mike, Shan or Mike Shanahan, it has really blossomed. 26 touchdowns a year under Shanahan in this offense. Second and seven, Elway, short set, that complete to Brian, Byron Chamberlain. The tight end ball comes loose, and they'll rule it down. Picked you know, up by Darian Gordon, but he won't get a chance to run it. John Elway is really a different style quarterback now than he was back in the old days. Now you see the three set, fire the ball. He's getting some great catches out of his wide receivers. They believe in him. Mike Shanahan has shortened his drop down a little bit and given him a lot of places to go with the ball early. There's a nice adjustment. Now, you, you got the receiver up. He's not down yet. Yeah. Forward, forward progress stop. It is a first down for Denver. And a loss of two on the toss to Terrell Davis. What I was saying before is what Mike Shanahan has done, he's just put him in an offense where he can get rid of the football quicker. I think that does a couple things. First of all, it makes your offensive line feel like they can protect to nth degrees. The second thing is, it protects the quarterback from taking a pounding. And at John's age of 36, and if he wants to play two or three or four more years, in this offense, he's going to take a lot less hits. And he has a running game he can rely on, with Davis leading the NFL on the ground. Second and 12. Hustling out of the pocket. He can still run and gets out of bounds. Here's John Elway's take on the dramatic rise in his production over the last few years, especially under Mike Shanahan. The last four years under Wade Phillips and now Mike Shanahan, I've been given the, uh, the ability to compete statistically with the other quarterbacks in this league, whereas the first 10 years, that really wasn't what it was about. I, I think that uh, in my first 10 years, I, I made a lot more plays than I'm making now, but I was forced to just because of the system. And statistics are important to players. Even if they tell you they're not, they are. It's the first thing they look at. Well, W's and L's to coaches sometimes. Third and nine. Sayoff comes on the blitz. Zimmerman picked him up. That one's tipped, and Miller couldn't get to it. Sayow with the pressure. And one other thing on John Elway, Mike, he also, I think, benefited from a heck of a coach in Jim Fossil, who he had under Wade Phillips for two years. I think that started to groom him into a much more disciplined quarterback. Jim Fossil is one of the finest teachers of quarterbacks, and in all likelihood could wind up as a head coach in this league real soon. Tom Ruin will come on to punt. Darian Gordon waits back at the 10. Rowan oh, hangs it very high. But it takes the San Diego bounce into the end zone, so they'll start at the 20 after a 43-yard punt. Position, and as he comes, Zimmerman tries to get a hand on him, but he just stops. This is the new thing now. Once you're blocked as a linebacker rushing, stop, focus on the quarterback, and in time your jump to try and swat the ball down. It's exactly what he did. Every game, every single play, critical to Junior Seau. 
play action. Out. Guess who? When you hear a sound like that, it's got to be Atwater, and he just killed Deems May. Hat to hat. That's the way they teach you. Hat to hat. Steve Atwater just doing what he's supposed to do, staying in the flat. Now, with balls in the air, he closes helmet to helmet. Picture perfect tackle. Atwater, number three in tackles on the team, over 100. And this one, incomplete. I'll tell you, Stan Humphreys is trying so hard to make it easy on his receivers that time. Nice touch pass. Took a lot off that ball. Just tried to get it out there nice and easy to Shannon Mitchell. And they still can't come up with the catch. Three of eight. 21 yards. Two INTs. Neither of them his fault, I believe. Neither of them his fault. No. And only his 11th and 12th interceptions of the season. Third and seven now. The Chargers have to get something going. They'll go with three wide receivers. Four-man rush under pressure for a short incomplete. Braxton, the closest man to it. And the Boo Birds are out in San Diego as Humphreys took a shot. Jumpy Gathers. That time might just come for it. He's got his feet in the blocks. We put one here, one here, draw that line. The gun goes off. Bang! He's gone. There's Jumpy. Right out of the blocks. Look at that. You can't stop me. Nobody can stop me. And he winds up in Stan's lap. He might be the strongest man in the NFL. A lot of people consider him that way. Been doing it a lot of years. 13 out of Wichita State. He's the one who patented the forklift move. Bennett to punt to Rod Smith. Got a beauty off last time. Gets another one off. Up near the rim of the stadium. Smith all the way back to the corner. And driven out of bounds short of the 30-yard line. Nine-yard return after a 57-yard punt. ESP Paul. McCaffrey, a nice job on the corner. Maybe too nice a job as there's a flag down. McCaffrey may have hooked his man. Yeah, McCaffrey really just sort of gets in the since closing. He's just going to stop and stand there and let Harrison run into him. Look at this. He doesn't clip him. He just stops. See that? Puts his hands back, says, hey, I didn't hit him in the back. Rodney has to turn around and try and, and chase Davis. Smart, good football player. Has run a 4-3-8. Everybody thinks that's not fast. Has run 4-3-8. He looks slow. Even when he's running by guys, he looks slow. That's Darian the key, though. Gordon, yeah. <laughs> Darian Gordon is out. Of course, they've had problems at the corner. Dwayne Harper's been hurt all year. Right now, Willie Clark has to check in now. First and 20. Elway trying to scramble, lost the football. San Diego has it. Junior Seau recovered. Vernon Edwards forced the fumble. And Junior's going to take a victory lap. And pass out a souvenir. Junior just finds a way to be around the ball. They expect him to make big plays, and he does. Vernon Edwards is going to come in from the left side. He's got John wrapped up. John gets hit, protected himself. Ball's on the ground. Boy, that is the most thankless feeling in the world. You just, I mean, you're hopeless, helpless completely. San Diego with its first break of the game. Start from the 15. Freddie Bradley gets a couple and no more. Denver, number four overall in defense in the NFL. Maybe the best defensive unit they have ever had. Even going back, comparing with their Super Bowl team. I think when, when you talk to Greg Robinson, you talk to John Elway, who's sort of like the, the elder statesman who's been around for so many years there, he feels like this is the best team he's been on. Playing tonight without defensive right tackle Michael Dean Perry, who has a slight ankle injury. None of the Broncos really hurt badly. If this were a playoff game, they would all be in there. Bradley on the top. Nice cutback inside the 10, trying to get some help from Vaughn Parker. Alfred Williams helped out on the tackle. 
Inside the 20, the Chargers have really struggled this year. 16th in the NFL, scored only 48% of the time. Stan Humphrey has really had his problems inside the 20. You know, the 12 TDs is not a lot. Four sacks is a problem. But the other thing is, if you can't run the football in the 20, you're going to have a tough time putting it in the end zone because defenses just don't respect you. They drop back. Third and four. Humphreys over the middle, and it's complete to Jones, touchdown! Charlie Jones, the rookie from Fresno State, and Stan Humphreys finally found somebody who could catch it. Last time what they did, Mike, is they cleared two receivers out on the left side, let Charlie Jones run a little angle in, makes the catch, and Stan, the way he throws this, it's going to look like he's almost walking up and handing it to him. Dan Humphreys with a career-high 18th touchdown pass to get the Chargers back in the ballgame. Carney with a point answer. So mistakes have led to all the points tonight. Two San Diego interceptions, one Denver fumble. This is just a case of receivers running off and one coming underneath. Watch this. You're going to see receiver running off, receiver running off. Charlie's going to come out here, run a little angle in. Stan's going to drop it to him right in the middle. Mays clears out, Martin clears out, good little angle against the zone, find the hole, get in the end zone. This is from the end zone cam. Charlie Jones just squirting in the end zone. Charlie Jones, the rookie, the all-time leading receiver at Fresno State. Bobby Ross says, I'm worried about the guy because he is really frail at 5'8", 175. I don't want to see him get killed. You know, if you think about guys in the offseason, what they're going to have to do, Charlie Jones is going to have to spend some time in a weight room. Not, not that he needs to get more cut or anything. He just needs to physically get used to taking a pounding over 16 weeks of a season. He physically needs to be at practice and on the field to help Stan Humphreys out. But the kind of a receiver that you can grow with in your program... The wild card games on ABC are set for next Saturday afternoon. We will be in Buffalo as the Jets man awaits Carney's kickoff. Hebron two yards in the end zone. He'll bring it out. Dangerous return man keeps his feet, dives across the 25 to the 26. Tackle made by David Hendricks down on special teams. First starting position inside his own 10, leading 10-7. Davis in the flat, and that was knocked down by Seau again. Mike Jr. just basically takes the responsibility and the load of this football team on his shoulders. He wants to make big plays every time he's on the field. So far, he's done a number of them, knocking balls down, recovering fumbles. This one here, he just keeps on coming. He just keeps on pursuing instead of stopping and winds up tipping it away. The emotional leader of this defense going to get another Pro Bowl. Davis, inside handoff, nothing. Well, they're missing three of their top five defensive linemen. Of the five, of the five that are left to play tonight, two have already been hurt, and guys like Ray Lee Johnson are just making big plays. Well, the thing is, you get guys that haven't played all year. First of all, they're not beat up. They're not tired, so you get really a, a fresh set of legs out there. Plus, the other thing is, as an offensive coach, you don't really know what they can do. So you're dealing with a little bit of an unknown out there. And for Dave Adolph, his team is just firing off the ball. They're going to try and get in the backfield. Third and ten. And Denver has been the best in this situation all year. One reason, Elway completes the Miller. He'll be short of the first down at the 15-yard line. So San Diego played the soft zone, and Elway threw underneath. That is the maturity of John Elway. In years gone by, he'd wait and wait and wait, knowing it was third and ten. He'd say, okay, I'm going to run around a little bit, let somebody get past the first down, and then I'm going to throw it. That time, just took what the defense gave him. Ruin will kick to Charlie Jones, who waits back at his own 42. You have to hand it to San Diego. Out of the playoffs, maybe with a chance to finish under 500. 
they make the two big mistakes early, they could have mailed the rest of this in, but they haven't. Jones on a nice punt driven all the way back to the 32. Got the corner. And knocked out of bounds at the Denver 47-yard line. A 21-yard return to tackle by Rondell Jones. Into the corner, 10-7 Broncos. Back on to San Diego. Humphreys wants the screen, throws too high. Romanowski with the interception. The third pick of this game. Freddie Bradley, the intended receiver, the pass was too high. That's just a case of a guy not being on the field enough to really be able to find the quarterback, find a way to catch the ball, and find his lineman. He's in the mix. He's hurrying to get out. Now he tips it. Now, granted, Stan threw it out a little bit, but well, I tell you, once a ball gets tipped in the middle of a field, it usually winds up in the wrong person's hand. And it looked like Greg Engel, his center, may have either obstructed his vision or bumped him. And it's been a game of nothing but mistakes. And now Bill Musgrave has checked in at quarterback. His Elway's night may be done. Six out of 11, 46 yards. It's a 10-7 Bronco lead. Back in a moment. Have to go into their first playoff game. And they'd uh, be out there that short of time. Musgrave out in the flat, complete to Carswell. Oh, and the big tight end playing in place of Shannon Sharp, 261 pounder. Goes down the field. Willie Clark made the tackle. Musgrave, 20 out of 34 this year. No touchdowns and an interception. Mike Shanahan familiar with him from his days in San Francisco, and he started the game in Green Bay when Elway was out with the hamstring pull. And he's a, he's a different type of quarterback than John is. He's not going to move around, and Mike will change the game plan when he's in there. Second and four. David. I want to show you some Mike. Just, I want to show you how, how intricate this game is. So far, for Denver on offense, you've had an offensive lineman jump offside. He has Infante, okay, he jumps off. Now, watch this handoff from Musgrave to Terrell Davis. Watch the handoff. You think everything's simple? Look at this. It's not clean. Now, in three plays, you've had a lineman offside. You've got a running back not having a clean handoff. That's how comfortable everybody gets. That's the difference between the starter and the second guy. Three wide receivers set on third and three. Terrell Davis has had no success tonight. Seven carries, only three yards. He gets a little shovel talk. Davis with his best run of the night to the 30. Rodney Harrison and Junior Seau combined on the tackle. You can't arm tackle him. You just can't arm tackle Terrell Davis. He's going to be coming right into your living room down low here. Does a good job of fielding the ball. Now watch this. Arm tackle? No way. Running right through everybody's arms. Of course, you don't, you don't get those kind of runs unless you get receivers blocking. Anthony Miller doing a good job. Staying with it. Staying in front of Sapp. Finally throws on him and creates a little hole. Play action by Musgrave. Throwing on the run, Miller had it knocked away. Mark Montroy got a hand on it and knocked it down. Shaw and Gordon, both starting corners, are out right now for San Diego. Clark and Montroy are on the field. Shaw took a shot to the head and is dazed. Gordon had a quad injury. He may or may not be back. Willie Clark in his third year. Montroy only in his second come out of the Canadian League. Second and ten. Davis on the door. Breaks the tackle. Gets down to the 25-yard line. Terrell Davis, 21st running back taken in the draft. 21st. No. And another injury for San Diego. That's Junior.
Well, we've all seen that reaction. He's uh, just angry because he's exactly, hurt. Exactly. Bobby Ross is just, this game has sort of been the synopsis of a season for him. Junior coming in. That's Broderick Thompson, number 76. He really just sort of bends the knee back as he rolls over the top of him. Junior in obvious discomfort. We'll be back to check on his condition. 12.32 to go in the half. They are unable to put almost no weight at all on that right leg. Let's take a look again at what happened. You'll see his leg gets bent back. Watch the left side of the screen right there. See right in there how his foot gets caught in Broderick Thompson's right in between his leg and he just bends that ankle and knee back. Mm. Now Broderick tries to lift his leg and get it out of the way so he's not putting any more pressure on it but by then I think he'd already done the damage. Third and five for Denver. Musgrave quarterback draw nothing to it. Rayleigh Johnson with another play. Good call, too. He comes from the outside and runs a stunt inside. And what he basically does is he fills the passing lane. That's the thing you have to be conscious of with shotgun, guys. He comes from outside in. He's filling that lane, the escape lane of the quarterback. Musgrave has nowhere to go. So Elam will come on to try one from just outside 45 yards to try to extend the lead. Rowan is his holder. Hooked it. And the San Diego holds and still trails by only three with 11.58 to go first half. Back and up the cart for Junior Seau to take him to the locker room, and he told them what they could do with the cart. He's not going anywhere. Elbow, 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 elbow. Bradley, the running back, tries to cut it outside. Atwater up in a hurry to make the tackle. Let's go to Mark Malone. Mark. Mike Jumpy Gathers is in our Packard Bell spotlight. He's one of the critical free agent acquisitions that has helped turn this defense, this Bronco defense, around this year. It's 6'7", 300 pounds. Offensive linemen dig their heels in, try to shoot their hands, and this is what happens. A quick swimmer at 300 pounds and puts the lick on Humphreys. And then on the other side, he works the combination. The swim gets into the center and then again hits Humphreys. Telling you what, in 13 years in this league, this guy still has what it takes to get it done. Mike? Mark, he just drives people back toward the quarter. Unbelievable strength. Now he's getting some spikes on to help him do it more. Second and nine. Not a very quick pitch change, I've got to be honest with you. Those tires in quick, guys. Fletcher on the quick handoff, absolutely nothing. Let's go back to Mark. Mike, here are the numbers on Gethers so far. In terms of rushing, well, the Chargers have rushed up the middle twice for only five yards. No tackles for Gethers, but he does have one quarterback pressure and two hits. And he's one of the reasons guys like Braxton have a lot of interceptions and Alfred Williams are getting the sacks on the outside because he pushes the pocket so well. You know, Mark, he has always done that throughout his NFL career. Other players say, Jumpy Gethers really made a difference. He never seems to get any of the credit, but he helps everybody else get it. A little pushing and shoving after the last play. And a marker went down. The trainer, I think they finally, they're, I think they're going to convince him to have this thing looked at a little bit more than he thought he should have. Humphreys rolls left, throws, and intended for Martin, but out of bounds. Braxton was right there. Stan has not played well at home this year, which is really surprising. His numbers have been much better on the road. You know, Mike, Tony Martin told me on Friday, he said, you know, this game's personal, he said, because up in Denver when they played the last time, they were talking some trash to him. And he said, you know, he, I think he's pressing a little bit, to be honest with you, in this game. Well, they're still talking to him. That's Rod Smith, who was waiting for Bennett Hunt. The Australian rules football player who just kicked the daylights out of him, gets off another good one. Smith from the 29. And got out of bounds short of the 40-yard line. Ten yard return after a 50-yard punt. There's a marker down on this one, too. Foul penalty call against Denver, so they're back to the 24. We told you earlier, we're taking a look at our spotlights, of course, all year long. But we have a couple of special ones this year involving playoff guys. Now, let's go to Mark Malone and see what he has for us. Mark? 
Well, Mike, uh, of course, the Jacksonville rookie defensive end, Tony Brackens, is in our spotlight. Jacksonville in the playoffs, of course, earlier today. They'll play in Buffalo on Saturday. The playoffs, you need playmakers, and Brackens showed us in our game last week he can change the landscape of a football game almost instantly. A powerful 265 pounds, Brackens uses cat-like quickness to get to the quarterback. He's got a lot of ways he can disrupt an offense. You remember all the batted balls, and even when he drops into coverage, Brackens has shown great hands and an instinct for making the big plays, the wonderful players. And what's interesting about these numbers is that as a rookie, he's not even an every-down player. But the way he's played on third down, down the uh, playoff stretch here, Mike, I'm telling you, it wouldn't surprise me at all that this guy is going to see more playing time against Buffalo. Mark, you could tell me those numbers were for our game last week, and I would believe you. He made every play, and believe it or not, Junior Seau is back on the field for San Diego. Musgrave dumps it short to Davis, and Junior is there to make a tackle. It is hard to believe a guy who could not put any weight That's on his right leg Davis. goes to the bench for maybe, That's what, five minutes? And now he's back in the game. That just shows you his attitude. Well, they're special athletes. Reggie White is another. Remember when he pulled that hamstring that everybody said, oh, it's going to be a problem? Took one game off, came back out, has never had anything done to it. Junior is the same type of an athlete. They're, they work so hard to get so strong that the other muscles compensate. I wouldn't want to, want to be the guy who tells Junior this game doesn't mean anything. Davis lost the ball. Still loose. San Diego saying they have it. And they do. Junior has it. <laughs> and he sprints off the field. Unbelievable. Rodney Harrison made the hit that caused it. Look at this guy. He's just trying to figure out. He's finding the littlest guys in his yeah. hands to give it to. For Denver, they still can't get the handoff right. Musgrave to Davis. This, again, you got to get your hand in and out. Bill Musgrave and Terrell Davis just haven't been able to figure out how to make a simple exchange yet. Junior Seau is just a stunning player. Aaron Hayden checks in for the first time as the running back. He's been a major disappointment for the club this year. Humphreys has this one batted and nearly intercepted by Lotus. The big guy had a shot at the easiest one he'll ever get. Stan's not believing this. I mean, he just, everything that he throws up winds up going to the wrong place. Ma Tanavasa, number 98, just swats it away. Look at this one. Holy mackerel, look. They're falling out of the skies, Mike. I can't <laughs> believe it. Lotus is running around going, they're coming from the ceiling. So Dan Humphreys has to wonder what is happening. Four out of 13, three picks already. And this guy's a terrific quarterback, folks. Short set, double clutches. Has it complete to Martin, but only for a couple of yards. Lionel Washington, who already has an interception, is in on the stop. Mike, quite often we talk about rhythms. Kickers get in rhythms. Offenses get in rhythms. Neither one of these offenses are in a rhythm tonight. They're both being dictated to by the play on the other side of the ball, the defenses. And you wouldn't expect it from San Diego's defense right now. They've had a tough time all year. Now they're working on Junior's hand. Fletcher is the single set back on third and six. Humphrey fumbles the snap from center. It'll be fourth down. Covered by Romanowski and Tanavasa. I'll tell you, when I was on the field during warm-ups and I was talking to Stan, he said it's going to be real interesting tonight trying to hang on to the football because of the slickness on the ground as well as the mist in the air. It just comes out. Again, remember, Greg Ingles is a new center for him. Courtney Hall, gone for the year. Carney comes in to try a field goal. It will be a 50-yarder. Carney's long this year, 53. And now we've got a timeout called by Sean Salisbury, his holder, with 8.36 to go in the half. Second timeout. 30-second timeout. One thing Bobby Ross said about Engel was that, of course, we lost Courtney Hall, arguably uh, their best lineman, but Engel proved he can play in this league. Maybe not as, as, as to supplant Courtney Hall, who's a terrific player, but he can play in this league. There's Courtney. Courtney, you know, he's tried to help out as much as he can, but 
I mean, they, they really miss him on the field. They, they miss the guy in the middle. Everybody talks about different positions of leadership. The center is one that is a position not only of leadership, but communication to the other offensive linemen. I think that's what you miss when you're a young guy and haven't played there a lot. And they lost Harry Swain, who was their most experienced tackle, and Alfred Papuna, who was arguably their best blocker from the tight end. From 50. And we are tied at 10. Carney crushes one, and it's a 10-10 tie in San Diego. I think Junior Seau has lifted this team on his back with his play tonight. Well, and it's sort of in the story of a season for him, too. I mean, he has carried this football team all year, play after play. And they've really got that left hand padded up. Hurt his right knee earlier. The NFL's best pregame show. Self darn lucky. Auditions for the pom-pom unit. <laughs> I don't think he's going to make it. They're not going well. <laughs> and, of course, our opportunity to wish all of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. Santa's arrived early in San Diego. Bobby Ross wished he'd have showed up about three weeks ago. Vaughn Hebron, the deep man, number four in the AFC in kickoff return. Nice cut across the 20. 30. Hebron still on his feet to the 49-yard line. Great return until Eric Castle makes the tackle. A 43-yard run back. Mike, you can block great returns, but then also you can have guys do it on their own. This is one where Hebron does it on his own. Watch it. There's going to be three Chargers that have a shot at him. Right there. Three of them have him surrounded. Now he just keeps on making people miss and weaving his way through traffic. The Chargers still can't tackle him. Missed all of 95 with the knee injuries. Out of Virginia Tech, a very explosive runner. And he will stay on the field as the deep man in the backfield. Musgrave and they almost had the interception. Oh man! I believe it's a one-man show. He's all, there, I swear there's five of them playing out there. And gets up limping. Unbelievable. Junior just reading his eyes. Now he goes up to make the play. You know, you'd almost want to say if he had a good knee, he would have had it. Almost makes the interception. Just remarkable, playing for nothing but pride. <laughs> Musgrave, very short and incomplete. Seau may have gotten a fingertip on it as it was intended for Chamberlain. If Junior did touch it, that would be his third deflected pass of the night. Broncos. 29 games since Denver scored a touchdown without Elway as quarterback. Now, that tells you something. John has to be on the field for this team to win. Just to tell you when that was, Mike, to put it in perspective, it was game two of last year against that. Four wide receiver set on third and ten for Musgrave. Plenty of time. Throws to Craver. And Aaron Craver with second effort and hard running got the first down. Craver, with his 34th Pass catch of the season, never Aaron started Kramer. until last year with the Broncos. This is his sixth the year in the NFL. Five, Always two, been a terrific receiver. Also, Free agent out of Miami. I think he gives you a good changeup. If you want to sit Terrell down a little bit, he gives you that power back. He's a good size. He's 220 pounds. So he's a guy who can pound it in there for you if you want to keep that style of offense. 733 and counting. Terrell Davis. Apparently, his night has ended as well as Elway. Musgrave stumbled a little bit, and there is Ray Lee Johnson again. He is loving the opportunity to be in there. Mike, he has given Broderick Tom Thomas Thompson, excuse me, everything that he can handle, and then some. Watch, watch the left hand, the big left hand swat, and right around the corner. Roderick Thompson just can't quite get his feet in front of him. 
He's in there to provide the pass rush, but we have seen him tonight. He has played the run very, very well. Quick guy, 265, not a big power in. Craver or Hebron on the draw. Back to the 45-yard line. If Terrell Davis does not play the rest of this game, he will be 160 yards ahead of Barry Sanders, who will finish this season tomorrow night on Monday Night Football. And no, it's not real comfy to have only 160 on Barry Sanders. Uh, he said he has called the Niners defensive players and says, boys, you know what you got to do. And he says, I'll be watching. Man, when you got Barry, nothing. 200 wouldn't be safe with Barry. We've seen him get 160 and a half. Third and long for Musgrave. Dumps it short to Miller. Just back to the original line of scrimmage inside the 40-yard line. Lou Bush led the defensive charge. That's a good job by Dave Adolph. Just bringing Junior on the rush, who's a one-man gang as it is, and dropping everybody back in his the zone. There he goes right around Zimmerman. I mean, the two outside well, well, rushers well, here well, are, are playing havoc with these tackles, Zimmerman and Thompson, for the Broncos, which can make Mike Shanahan feel Johnny very Johnson. comfortable. You know, I, I think they get used to blocking for John, though, and all of a sudden you get a quarterback in. It does make a difference. Ruin the punt to Jones, trying to hang it up and kill it inside the pin. Excellent coverage, and the Broncos do their job on special teams, stopping the ball at the seven. Darius Johnson got down there in order to make the easy catch. Well, Coming up Saturday at 4 o'clock, the Vikings and the Cowboys from Dallas. Talked about uh, Junior Seau being a warrior tonight. Bruce Smith has been a warrior all year long. He's been terrific. Aaron Hayden, who really hasn't shown this team a burst, gets a chance to carry the ball. Carrier number 24, Aaron Hayden. They were really hoping the way he played in the second half of last year. Remember, he was still recovering from a leg injury that he had suffered in, in Tennessee. And he started all through preseason. Tour. Then all of a sudden they get into the first game and bang, they just didn't, they didn't really like what they saw. They went with Leonard Russell. And like you said, Mike, he gave them as much as he could, but with no real quickness or burst. Maybe an entirely new backfield kit. Terrell Fletcher comes in on second and 13. There is Atwater, the wicked hitter out of the secondary. Play action by Humphreys in trouble. Throws it away. Is there a flag? Boy, the Denver sideline wanted that safety, thinking that should be intentional grounding. Is Alfred Williams putting the pressure on? Alfred Williams on Harry Swain coming from the outside. Swain fires out and just really has no shot at him. Fletcher tries to help out. You got two guys who barely laid a hand on him. I got to be honest with you. If it was two-hand touch, Alfred Williams wouldn't have been down here. Stan does a good job of reacting and just moving. And I think Stan got away with one, throwing that ball away. Third and 13. Throws short, Fletcher can't hold it. Lionel Washington was right there anyway. But a frustrating night so far for Humphreys. I mean, no matter where he throws the football, the guys can't catch it. If it's a little in front, it goes through their hands. If it's a little behind, it winds up hitting him in the hip. It's just really the story of the season for the Chargers on offense. Just a hit and miss offense. Darren Bennett to punt to Smith. Look at the average, 55 on three tonight. They could use a big one here. High but short. Fair catch made at the San Diego 47-yard line. So Denver with excellent field position to start with after a 42-yard punt. Coming up at halftime, Chris Burke behind Musgrave. Musgrave dumps it off. Hebron inside the San Diego 40 to the 39-yard line. Rodney Harrison makes the tackle. Mike, this is an offense that really gives the quarterback a chance with a lot of places to go. Watch this. As we roll this, you're going to see where he has a chance to go with the football. Right in this area, you're going to see three receivers of his able to stop. Right there. They're the guys. You got one going here, one's going to come through here, and there's another one. 
he has an opportunity to just dump the ball off anywhere he wants. That's part of this offense. Doesn't allow the quarterback to hold the ball a long time. Second and one, Hebron. Didn't get it, maybe lost a half yard. Marco Coleman, who's back in there after an injury, led the charge along with Say Allen Harrison. Boy, there's, there's a tough place for Marco Coleman to be. He's only 265 pounds. They gave him a tackle. That's because of all the injury depletions on that defensive line. We saw Patrick Sapp, a linebacker, defensive end earlier. Now third in the yard. Musgrave wants to throw for it in the flat to Craver, and he'll be very close to a first down. Bush on the coverage. He's doing a good job of just moving the chain. You know, Musgrave not trying to do anything. Hasn't really thrown the ball downfield yet. Really nothing over 10 yards. Gary Kubiak, the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach. He was one of the best backup quarterbacks that ever played in the National Football League. How's that? You wind up being the coach of a guy who was ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> There's the guy that was ahead of him. They have a good relationship, they, too. All three of them do. Mike Shanahan, Gary Kubiak, John Elway. They, they all respect one another's position. I think that's very important. John knows that Gary's ball. doing his job, and, and John has his to do on the field, and Mike has his to do as the head coach. Here's the measurement for the first down. And they just got it. Of course, Mike Shanahan has taken the West Coast offense, per se, that he had in San Francisco, and taken it really to another level. You don't see the shotgun in the conventional right. West Coast offense. But with John's athletic ability, he's made it a part of it. Although last year, when he put it in, Mike, he really made John work from under the center. Now he's gradually adapted to the personnel that he has and has opened it up a bit. Mike Shanahan has an exceptional football mind. First and 10, approaching two and a half minutes to go first half. Musgrave wants to throw. Dumps it over the middle again. And nailed by Govea is Hebron. I think sooner or later, Musgrave's going to have to go down the field because the linebackers now are starting to crowd the running backs in the check down. Pretty soon, he's going to have to take it up 12, 15 yards to either a tight end or one of the wide receivers. He has thrown three-fourths of his passes right in the middle of the field under the linebacker drop. We've reached the two-minute warning. It was compiled 123 wins, third most. Right. Hall of Famer Fran Tarkenton won 125. That's second only to Denver's John Elway, who was quarterback the Broncos to 126 wins, the most in NFL history. None have won an NFL championship. Can this be the year for John Elway? A lot of people have them favored at least to make the Super Bowl, if not win it. Musgrave, good protection over the middle. Bob over the interception. Picked off by Willie Clark at the 20. And they were by number 30. never really gets a clean handle on this one. Like I said, Mike, you bobble this thing in the middle of the football field. It's going to wind up in the wrong person's hands nine out of ten times. We've seen it a couple times tonight. This is an angle out of the backfield by the running back. Good coverage, but he tips it up. There's Willie Clark. Good protection. Well-thrown ball. Clark with his second interception. Third-year man out of Notre Dame. He was a sprinter in college on the track relay team. Humphrey, nowhere to go. Intended for Coleman, but he's covered well by Hilliard, who's in there for the injured Ray Crockett for this game. Crockett sprained the knee a week ago. There's Willie Clark. Look at this. Six turnovers in the first half. And all the points have come from them. Von Hebron on the sideline after not being able to come up with that ball. The Chargers with only one timeout left, a minute 47 to go in the half. Humphrey's under pressure. 
and sacked back at the 12. Nice effort by Ma'a Tanavasa. Stan Humphreys had no way to step up, Mike. Look at Jump. Look at Jumpy. Well, we'll put Jumpy back in the block. He's just going to go right into the pocket. Now he's a yard off the ball, so he's got a running start. Here comes the forklift. He just takes Moten and dumps him. And what he does when he, that happens is he opens up the middle of that pocket for somebody to come in and flush Stan. Gosh, he's strong. The sack goes to Tanavasa, his first. Three wide receivers on third and 17. Draw play, Fletcher, a lot of room. You see that a lot when the defense is playing man-to-man. -man. The backs have their back to the play following the receivers, and there's a big gaping area in the middle. Well, everybody, you know, you know you need 17 yards, and the linebackers have a long way to go to get there. And what they're really doing is running to a spot to pick up a receiver. You know it's 17 yards. you got to figure there's no way the, a running play is going to get that for you. So you, you play percentages. ABC's Monday Night Football comes your way tomorrow night, 9 Eastern. Steve Young and the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Detroit Lions. And you get to see Barry Sanders try to get that NFL rushing title away from Terrell Davis. It's been a good first half for the fans. A lot of action, six turnovers, 20 points, all coming off of the turnover. Of course, you talk about giveaway takeaways, Mike. The Broncos are 6-2. When they lose the takeaway giveaway ratio, so I mean, if they don't make a mistake, they just don't lose. Rod Smith waits back at the 20 for Bennett. When Bennett first auditioned for the Chargers, first time he ever took a snap, he'd never seen football. The snap hit him right in the face, went right through his hand, and realized it came that fast. He's caught on now. Guy high. Smith, fair catch, makes it outside the 30. Let's go to Mark Malone. Mike, tonight's spotlights were supposed to have a oh, playoff my. twist. Chargers aren't going to the playoffs, but Junior Seau's pure courage and determination cannot go ignored. In the first play after the leg injury, look at this. Playing, playing, and then comes off and makes the tackle in coverage on Davis. And then again, playing off the block, trying to protect the leg, makes the big fumble recovery. And then again, dragging the leg around in coverage makes the big play. Almost an interception there. Here are the numbers so far. Five tackles, four batted balls, two fumble recoveries, one quarterback hit. All this guy hasn't done is win a Super Bowl. So if anybody questions what this game means to him, they got another thing coming, Mike. Mark, absolutely. And if you joined us late, he limped off the field. In fact, he had to be helped. He couldn't put any weight on that leg. Musgrave throws to Smith. He's got it at the 45. Rod Smith out of Mississippi Southern. And a face mask on top of it. on the field. Oh, no, back the other way, says Tom White. Had the right team the wrong direction. Mike, you're not going to believe this. So far in the first half, there have been 19 drives. 19 drives in this first half. I mean, you, you don't you don't get sometimes but four or five in an entire half. 19. Wow. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 76. Offense. 15 yards. First down. That's Broderick Thompson. Picked him up from Philadelphia, and Ray Lee Johnson has been having a great time against him. He's got great quickness. You know, Mike, he isn't that big. Like I said, he's 265, and he's just using his speed to come around the outside. And again, when you're used to blocking for John Elway, you take a certain way, and you get an idea where John's going to be. Now with Bill Musgrave back there, he's not quite as mobile, does things a little bit different. Everybody's affected on offense. It's first and 25. There is Alex Gibbs a brilliant coach he's the assistant head coach and the offensive line coach wherever he has gone in the nfl the numbers of the offensive line the protection the running game have increased dramatically this guy is instant success up front now with 51 seconds to go will denver try to protect the ball or go for it A little toss, there's a flag down, there was some early movement, Hebron. Three a washer and dryer in central air condition. You gotta love it. Draw play, Hebron. 
slipped one tackle, but Junior covered him up after Lou Bush slowed him up. In the second half, we'll be talking a lot of the uh, league-wide issues that we're facing, some of the championship performances this year, coaching changes, of course, huge around the NFL, MVP candidates. One yeah, of them right there. John Elway, certainly one of them. Yeah, they'll be looking for a new coach in St. Louis. Rich Brooks was fired. I thought that was a shame. I don't think you can give a guy two years. He laid a really good... Break the tackle. Flag is down. So is Hebron. It's a 30. Have we had a kick tonight that nope. didn't have a flag? I was just going to say, our record is still intact, Mike. The old illegal block in the back. The thing that jumps out at you at the first half stats, look at the rushing yard. Denver, number one in the NFL, averaging 153 yards a game. They have 27. San Diego is hardly burning it up, but they only have 28 yards passing, too, and 68 total. The big number for both teams, three turnovers, and all the points have come off of those combined six mistakes. And the time of possession is somewhat typical also. I mean, uh, Denver has managed to keep the ball... 33 minutes in most games they play only letting the opponent have it about 26 and a half so they're keeping the ball six seven minutes longer than everybody anyway after the penalty they start with their own 13 Hebron in motion Musgrave to Craver and Montroy buries Craver after a gain of about a yard or Hebron after a gain of about a yard and Mike this is good work for Bill Musgrave because you don't know what's going to happen down the road in, into the playoffs. If John gets nicked and you, and you need somebody to go in, it's hard to get your backups work during the regular season. So these last three weeks have been important for the Denver Broncos to get their guys some work. Musgrave on second and nine, this time Craver wrapped up by Seau at the 15, gain of another yard. Perella was also there, dropping back from his defensive line spot. Junior Seau is everywhere. This time he drops back into coverage, still focusing on Musgrave, and just closes. Perella comes in and finishes him off. He's unbelievable. I mean, it just, it's like watching... Braxton last week. You know, you watch one player just dominate one side of the football. That's what Junior's done. Tom White, the referee, comes to the sideline. He's looking for a phone, I think. Give me a phone. I gotta make a call. Oh, he has a choice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a couple of shopping days left till Christmas. Maybe he's uh, thinking of mail order right now. Maybe talking to the clock operator, too, a little bit. I think he's looking at the clock. He's out of watching the scoreboard. That's Kiyoki Kamau. He's going he's gonna to talk to Tom. <laughs> we get a couple more people there, and you got a, you got a regular switchboard. So they have been having trouble with the 25-second uh, play clock. And they may end up keeping that on the field if they can't get it to function. Now, that was a veteran trainer, Kiyoki Kamau. He, he knew that we had time on camera. So he just walked over and picked up a phone. He called no one. He was talking to no one. He just did it. Camera time. Camera time's important. Hey, Kiyoki. I was with him when we were at the Redskins. What a terrific trainer he is, too. Put me together more times than once, believe me. Check in with Mark Malone. Mark? Mike, little injury update here for you. Junior Seau supposedly has sprained a MCL slightly. They taped him at halftime. It's sore. The initial pain scared him. They don't think the joint is compromised. He'll play. Terrence Shaw is out with a concussion, and Darian Gordon got a thigh bruise. He's also out for the second half. Mike? It's really been a remarkable performance, Mark, by the San Diego defense with all the injuries that they had coming into this game and have suffered since. I think Junior may be bionic anyway. 40, 25 seconds left. The problem appears to be resolved, so we'll play with it. It had to do with the 25 second clock that sometimes goes to 40, and it appears that it's been resolved. Sure. 
You believe that? Didn't really? sound very Stay convincing, tuned. did he? No. Third and eight. And Musgrave just throws this one away. Well, you can see the difference in Elway and Musgrave. If that was Elway and that little clock in his head went off, John would have been moving in a lot bigger area than Bill Musgrave did that time. Musgrave much more disciplined to stay in the pocket, read his keys, and then just throw the ball away. That's Charlie Jones waiting for the punt, standing at his own 43. Ruin, who has fallen to 12th in the AFC this year, with only a 41-8 average. Returnable kick if Jones can get to it. And he can't. Ruin gets the bounce and it's out of bounds inside the San Diego 40 with the roll. The ball in both conferences about two out of every three times. There is a distinct advantage playing at home, Mike. First of all, a lot of guys talk about you get to sleep in your own bed. You know, there's the comfort of home, there's the mental piece that goes with it, as well as being able to play in front of your home fans. Second and five, this is Freddie Bradley takes a hard hit after picking up a couple of yards. They have forced been to four Super Bowls. They have lost all. But for John Elway, certainly, this may be the best talent he's ever been surrounded well, by. Well, it's the best team. He said himself, it's the best team that he's played on. Because the offensive personnel and firepower is up to what the defense was. When he used to play on the other teams, the defense was there. The offense sort of hung around. You try and win it at the end. And he would run around and make a play. This one is so complete. And you look at the records that it's put out. It, 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 I think it has a chance to go all the way to the Super Bowl. Dan Humphreys wants a timeout, and if you have to play the Broncos at mile high, good luck. Third and two for San Diego when we come back. So my, I think, and it's important that coaches preach we have to get home field. I think in Green Bay's case, for example, Teams like Dallas and San Francisco, if they get that far, I don't think it's in, as intimidating to them as maybe some others. Now, you go to mile high, there's always this thing in the back of your mind about the thinness of the air, and you wonder if you can physically hold up from a stamina standpoint. Third and two. Denver's showing blitz. They back out of it. Humphrey throws wide open. Martin to the 31-yard line. Randy Hilliard knocked him out of bounds. San Diego decides they're going to put a lot of receivers in one spot and then just run them in different places. Charlie Jones breaks out. Tony Martin goes up the field a little bit. It's really considered what we call a bunch package, Mike, when you get three receivers in a little five-yard uh, area and just send everybody in different directions. Longest play of the game. That was a 20-yard game. Play action by Humphreys. Has Roach wide open. Instead goes downfield to Martin. And Martin is walloped by Atwater, but he held on. What you saw on that play was trademark Stan Humphreys. Roach is open underneath. But what Stan wants to do is he wants to go down the field. He loves to press the ball down the field. There's Roach. He's wide open underneath. But Stan is focusing down the field to Tony Martin. And he just knows he can get the ball to him. Stan finally looks like he has a little rhythm because his receivers are catching the ball. Two tight ends, two wideouts. Bradley. That is a good run defense. You know, Mike, the thing, of, the thing about Denver and home field, take a look at that. They won all eight at home. 30 points a game over 400 yards from total offense. And 165 on the ground. You'll kill people doing it. And to put it in perspective, they've only averaged 19 on the road. That's how important home field has been for the Broncos. Or will be for them. Second and nine. Humphreys again with that little naked boot. Throw complete down to the five. Braxton made the hit on Deems May, but he held on. We and call it once the San Diego receivers have glue on their fingers. We talk about John Elway being able to wind up and fire a ball. Stan Humphreys can stand in there and let this thing fly with him. He comes out, 
to the left, sets, again, turns the hips and shoulders, and this is a gun. I mean, that thing is humming. And what I really like about the way Stan throws the ball is he keeps it low. He'll always protect his receivers and keep the ball down low so you know that the ground is close by and you have a chance to cradle and protect yourself instead of hanging out a guy up the middle with a real high pass and exposing his ribs. The receivers call that getting blown up, and he doesn't do it. First and goal for San Diego. Humphreys again, play action. Close at the end zone, touchdown Harry Swain! No, out of bounds! The crowd is celebrating, but one official signaled he was out of bounds. Well, they can't go back and reload the cannon, they fired up. Rolling his incomplete pass. Second foot, came down on the sideline. Second down. Harry's got to work on his tap tap on the sideline now. You're going to look to the right part of the screen, the lower right part. That's number 72 working his way to the corner. They're saying his second foot came down. One, two. No, absolutely not. The toe hits before the heel. Watch it. Well, there's one. See the toe hit? The toe hits before the heel inbounds. That's a bad call. Watch the toe. See the toe hit? You're right. Right there. Right there. That, now, See the referee? He's looking right at it. They'll go on the ground with Bradley. Tries to turn the corner and can't pick up a couple. Well, the Chargers have not benefited from many breaks this year. I think they really haven't, Mike. But now on this third down play... I think you come out, you spread the field, and you let Stan try and throw it in. Third down and four. Spread them out. Terrell Fletcher is in. Martin and Coleman, the wide receiver, Fletcher in the slot. Humphrey's throwing. Fletcher, couldn't hold it. He got away from Atwater and couldn't make the catch. Well, right, Stan Humphrey's kit just can't buy a break. You, you got to make these catches. You have to make these kind of catches. That's all there is to it. This isn't a perfect world. You got to have guys make plays. Does a good job of getting it off before Mobley can get to him. Now, you turn, that's not a hard catch. That's not a hard catch at all. He just totally misjudged it. Remember, two of Humphrey's interceptions were faults of the receivers. The third was a screen pass that looked like the intended receiver pumped into the lineman. So Carney comes on to get the field goal. The Chargers do take the lead, but it's only 13-10 instead of 17. Back in a moment. The NFL's MVP. Well, how about the Pack's Brett Favre? He led the NFL in touchdown passes with 39. Terrell Davis, who will probably win the league's rushing crown. And then there will be some votes for Pittsburgh's Jerome Bettis. His 10 100-yard games played a major role in the Steelers winning the division title. I think Brett Favre wins back-to-back. -back. I agree with you. I, I think... just think his performance, not that John's and Terrell's and Jerome's hasn't been sensational, but Brett has, has elevated that football team just, just to another level. You know, it, it, and it really, John is sort of sharing it now with Terrell. He'll get some split votes out and of that. And Brett still, you know, it's still on his shoulders. They go as far as he goes. He has a bad game. I don't think they can overcome it. Because they don't have the running game. They don't have the luxury of a Terrell Davis. And that's the thing that Mike Shanahan was pointing out to us last night that makes this football team so special, is if John struggles or you get some bad weather, you have the running game to rely on to keep you in the game, as well as having a great run defense. We're speaking of Shanahan, he'll get some coach of the year votes and obviously has earned them. Hebron from the goal line. Some nice job following his blockers up to the 27-yard line. Take a look at some of the numbers that the MVP candidates have racked up. Favre, 39 touchdown passes. Elway with a great year with 26. Davis and Les Barry Sanders can have a huge game tomorrow night. We'll win the NFL rushing title. And Jerome Bettis was the perfect fit for Pittsburgh's offense. Absolutely perfect.
He gave them everything they need. I still think when you get to the tournament time, which is coming up next week, the quarterbacks will make a difference. Musgrave starts at his own 27-yard line. Dumps it off to Claver. Say Alan Govea get over there, but he'll pick up nine, maybe ten yards. Pass complete to number 29, Aaron Kramer. And Junior getting up a little slowly with some help from Kevin Ross. Get on the stop. Junior, Junior basically Seau takes the philosophy, just get me on my feet. I'll do the rest once I get on my feet. He doesn't leave anything in the bag. It's all going to be out on the field when he's done. That is one great football player. Not too many like him come along in a in a lifetime. <laughs> Musgrave changing the play. Hebron. He'll have the first down at his own 39 near the 40. Kevin Ross made the tackle. Wild card Saturday coming up. The Jaguars against the Bills. That's a 12-30 start from Rich Stadium in Buffalo. We'll be there to bring you that game. And then Al Frank and Dan with the Vikings and the Cowboys. That's a 4 o'clock start in Big D as we I mean, roll over the play. Although the Cowboys That's got beat today at RFK, and what a great ceremony it was for that old war that horse that of a something. place. That what a great place to play. Point Best in the National Football League. Good protection from Musgrave and overthrows a wide open Vaughn Hebron. You know, like talking about the Cowboys, they really, I think, caught a break not having to, to win that game at RFK I agree. today. I think had a chance to rest Emmett Smith in particular, but Troy gets a little break. The linemen get a little rest. You know, they're gonna be they're gonna be a team to contend with. Let us not forget that is the world championship. Team. And even some reports that Jay Novacek may be ready for the playoffs. What a huge boost that would be. I'd be surprised if that happened. Craver, the single setback. Sayoff comes on the blitz, can't get there. The pass complete out to the 47-yard line. Byron Chamberlain with a ball that somehow got through the defense. Byron Chamberlain. Byron Chamberlain was a top receiver in the World League. Had 58 catches last year for eight touchdowns. So Junior Seau just continuing to do what he does. Here he comes on the blitz. Now they get to block him. Malin doing a good job. Look at his coverage. What a nice catch. The heir apparent to Shannon Sharp. Someday in the distant future. <laughs> Very distant. Musgrave bobbles the snap. Junior nails it. Incomplete is the roll. Junior got a free run at Musgrave. The problem was compounded because he bobbled the snap. I think when he looked down at the ball, he almost lost his head. Well, Junior just continues to come from different places on the line. One time it's the right end. Now he's right down here on the left end. There's a clean shot. Vaughn Hebron really doesn't pick him up and should have. You know, that's when you really need your backs to be aware of where the blitz pickup's got to be. Junior Seau with another remarkable performance. Charlie Jones waiting on Ruins' punt. Not a real good one. He'll make the fair catch at the 18-yard line. 36-yard punt for no return. He's called by... Junior Seau with his emotion and his athletic ability carrying the Chargers to a three-point lead. All right, Mike, we were talking about John Randall. Here are his numbers, and when you look at these numbers, 11 and a half sacks jump out. It's 91. He has more sacks, 69, than any other interior lineman in football. And what makes him even tougher is that this year he's playing all four defensive line positions. That means that an offensive lineman not only has to prepare for his man, but he's got to prepare for Randall as well. That's tough. And before, Mark, he had the advantage of having Henry Thomas play beside him. Bradley on the delay gets a couple up to the 34. Bill Musgrave headed down the tunnel toward the locker room. That's after the shot that Junior Seau gave him. Warming up is Jeff Lewis out of Northern Arizona. 
Young man who has not played yet in the National Football League, but it looks like he's going to get his opportunity. Well, he's post, he posted some big numbers at school. You notice John Elway didn't go running for his hat. They're running out of him, though. <laughs> John's hoping Jeff can handle it. Humphreys on second and six. Throws short and Nice catch. Trying to get the first down yardage. Got to the 40. Of course, Mark was just talking uh, about the Vikings and, and the pass rush provided by John Randall. How about the big contract Brad Johnson just signed? It looked like Warren Moon is either going to have to accept the pay cut in the backup role or go somewhere else. I don't think he will. I think Warren Moon will go someplace else and compete as a starter or have the opportunity to be a starter. I can't see him in a backup role. It's just not in his nature. And, and I don't think he serves a football team in a backup role because a healthy Warren Moon over somebody's shoulder is not good. Probably on third and one, first down. And certainly Brad Johnson deserves that contract. He has played exceptionally well since he's taken over the job. Mike, it was always my contention when I played that as long as you didn't give the other guy a chance to show what he has, you would keep your job. And in this case, you've got some of the other free agents that are out there. Elvis Gerbeck, of course, Scott Mitchell. Of course, you don't know what's going to happen in Detroit. Terry Allen. I think it's important they try and keep Terry Allen. Jerome Bettis had that built a clause built in. Daryl Johnston. There's talk that uh, Norv Turner may try and get him up in Washington. Here's Bradley again. Nice hole up the middle. Breaking tackle. Freddie Bradley to the Denver 41-yard line. When you look at that list of free agents, Gerback tops the list because the 49ers have to make a decision. You cannot pay two number one quarterbacks that kind of money, not with a salary cap. If I'm Gerback, I look for a deal somewhere around 10, 12 million with an escalator. If I get the job, that way it gives them a little bit of flexibility in the transition in their quarterback position. I think, you know, for him to leave and have Steve Young not have, have somebody behind him hurts the organization. 13 carries, 54 yards for Freddie Bradley. He's had a good night. He's will give it to him again. Lost his footing, got up, and still made something out of it to the 38-yard line. Bradley played at Moore Park Junior College and broke most of O.J. Simpson's running records there. Or National Junior College records the, that were set by Simpson. Then he went on to Sonoma State, but he only played there one year. Had a medical red shirt. One year he was out for academics. So Freddie Bradley has not played a whole lot of football, certainly at a level of competition that would prepare him for the NFL. Yeah, but you think, you know, there was another guy that played there that maybe you wouldn't think it'd been that way either. A guy by the name of Larry Allen with the Cowboys. Humphreys on second and eight and throws behind the intended receiver, Charlie Jones. Ralph Friedgen, the offensive coordinator for Bobby Ross, has been able to get into, like you said, a little bit of a rhythm. There's, there's Ralph right in the middle. Boy, and the report on Bill Musgrave is, is bad. He has a dislocated right shoulder. And depending on the severity of it, uh, he may not be ready for the playoffs well, at all. Well, in all likelihood, if it's dislocated, he won't be. Um, you know, you can, I had one, and it, it just that was something that just takes some time. Here comes the blitz against Humphreys. He unloads complete to the 31-yard line. Charlie Jones with the catch. Torrey James on the coverage. They will play either the 4th or 5th of January, but uh, two weeks, probably not enough for a dislocated shoulder. You always have some ligament damage. Especially with it. the throwing shoulder, Mike. If it's the off one, they can strap it down. But if it's the throwing one, it's a problem. It will be fourth and short. All the fans yell, go. But it's been a tough year for Bobby Ross. He dedicated this season to his father, who passed away earlier in the year, and said he knew he would give it everything he had. But the breaks simply haven't come Bobby Ross's way. And now he's going to have to make a decision on a couple of assistant coaches. Uh, for next year, whether the organization tries to force him to do something there. Yeah. He and Bobby Beathard will sit down and evaluate this football team and come up with some answers. They need some people. I think they need uh, a wide receiver to complement Tony Martin. I think Charlie Jones can get there, given time, but I think if you can find somebody right away, it helps. Harry Swain, 72, and is the tackle eligible on fourth and short.
quarterback keeper. He needed to get just to the 30-yard line, and it appears that he did. Stan can put that 230 pounds to good work on that sneak. Yeah, yeah, and you know something? For a guy as big as he is, he's got great feet, and moves around in a pocket well, gets back, gets set, and he carries it well. He gets the least publicity. of. I, I put him in the class with elite quarterbacks in this league. Yep. He gets the least publicity of any of them. <laughs> Sam's just going to follow the surge up the right side. They, line does a good job. I always look at who gets under who. If the defense gets under the offense, you're not moving an inch. If the offensive line can get under that defensive line, you can pick up a yard or a half. First down, San Diego. They have really responded well tonight. If you weren't with us at the beginning, they made one mistake after another early. We're down 10 nothing as a result of two interceptions and have fought their way back into this. I, you know, I just didn't think that all the players were focused. I didn't think Tony Martin came out focused in this game. I think everybody now is playing football. Humphreys dumps it underneath Bradley. Freddie Bradley down to the 10. Atwater threw a shoulder into him there along with Braxton. Mike, I think Freddie Bradley is going to be one of the guys that they have to look at next year to step up because he does have the quickness once he gets in the secondary to turn it up. Here he does a nice job of just working free. Keeps working for Stan. Then makes a good catch with his hands. Now protects the ball as he gets into traffic. Didn't let it get into his body. Getting the first start of his career. Another first down for the Chargers. Humphreys wants to throw again and almost caught by Jones. Nice play by Randy Hilliard, number 21, though. Boy, he just manages to knock it away. This is a quick slant. He's just going to try and run it up inside real quick. Stan's going to let this thing go in a heartbeat. Randy's just going to get a hand in. Just manages to get that left thumb up there. Hilliard playing for the injured Ray Crockett. Spread the field with four wide receivers. Draw. Fletcher. Fletcher dives inside the five. Got away from that water and all well, Fletcher. Boy, those safety support fast. Don't they? I mean, you know, you got to remember, Atwater's lined up at least 10, 12 yards away. Stan starts back, so he's got to respect the pass a little bit. And then as soon as he reads it, boy, he's coming in a heartbeat. Every time I look at the numbers on Atwater, it says he's been in the NFL for eight years. I swear he's played for 15. And he's always got 140 tack, doesn't he? 13th play of this drive coming. Third down. Comes the blitz. Unloads. Incomplete in the end zone. That could have been caught. Humphreys unloaded in a hurry, and the rookie couldn't catch it again. Charlie Jones got a hand on it. Remember I talked about where he throws the football, Mike? He throws it down low so that the receivers get a chance to make plays. Here's another one. This is the strength of his arm. The ball's down low. Charlie Jones just doesn't catch it. He's had two drops. One by uh, Terrell Fletcher. The other now by Charlie Jones. That should have been a Both touchdown. Both the young guys haven't come up with plays. And they had a touchdown taken away on an official's call when Harry Swain caught one in front of tackle eligible. Humphrey's very frustrated tonight. And has every right to be. So they'll go with a chip shot field goal. Carney has already hit from 21 and 50. Knocks that one through. 29 out of 36 for the year for John Carney. And the San Diego Chargers extend their lead to six points with 33 seconds to go in the third quarter. And look at the difference in the numbers for Stan Humphreys. Really turned it around in the second half, but he could have five, six more catches added to those numbers. And at least three touchdowns. Yeah. No, that, that's a, he's a true professional. At what we've seen from Junior Seau on the defensive side of the ball to keep on hammering away, 
same kind of effort here by Stan Humphrey. National Hockey Night, Thursday at 8 Eastern, as Dino Cicerelli and the Tampa Bay Lightning host their in-state rivals, the Florida Panthers, led by John Van Beesbrook and Ray Shepard. A National Hockey Night, Thursday at 8. 33 seconds to go, third quarter. And we are told that John Elway will come in to play the final 33 seconds of this quarter. Remember the rules. If Lewis came in as the emergency quarterback, which he is designated tonight, if he came in and got hurt... For the, before the fourth quarter started, nobody else could come back in. Elway would be out, and then you would go to your real emergency quarterback. So John will finish out the last 33 seconds, and then Lewis will get to play the fourth quarter. I don't think this was part of John's program. No, or Mike Shanahan. Hebron, the deep man, on the kickoff, and Carney crushes one and knocks it through the end zone. So Elway will start from his own 20. Out of the end zone for a touchback. And Junior Seau has finally called it a night, and I'm glad to see it, quite honestly. You don't want to see somebody of his great talent and his great heart take a chance on hurting himself any further. Not any further. They would not have let him out on the field, I think, too, Mike, if he, they felt like he really could have damaged it much more. Elway. Uh, Rich Kotite, he said he didn't quit and he wasn't fired. I'm not sure what he did, but he's, he's not, not there, there anymore. Right. Uh, the Giants, Dan Reeves expected to be fired tomorrow. New Orleans, Rick Venturi, almost certain not to be asked back. And Rich Brooks can today after losing with a 6-10 and 10 record. Jeff Lewis is on to play quarterback. Lewis in the flat to Kramer. Kramer diving across the 20 to about the 22. And of course, New England is on our list because Bill Parcells' contract will be up at the end of this year. He and Bob Kraft will sit down for the, when the season's over, and a lot of speculation around the league from people that know Bill and say he may or may not be back. He may definitely go somewhere else. Others say he's definitely going to stay. Let me tell you something. Knowing Bill as, as we've known him over the years, he hasn't made his mind up yet. I, I think to think that he might do anything is conject pure conjecture at this point. Third and nine. Lewis in the shotgun. Here comes the blitz. He unloads. Hit pass. McCaffrey nearly got it. Now there is a flag down. That was almost reminiscent of the Minnesota game with McCaffrey wide open on the tip play. Holding against the defense. That will be an automatic first down on third and nine. Holding number 40. Defense. That's a five-yard penalty. First down. Mark Montroy called for the hold. Mark Montroy, number 40, up against Rod Smith. You're allowed a jam inside of five. And he's just hand fighting. I don't, you know, this may be the last regular season game, and a uh, little bit of hand contact, they called it. Lewis straight back against the four-man rush. Dumps it short to Smith. And Smith out to the 33-yard line before he's gang-tackled. Of course, we talked about coaching changes, speculation about the future of Bobby Ross. There were rumors earlier in the year that Bobby was actively looking to go somewhere else. He told us there is no truth to those rumors. He will come back. He would love to come back. He has a contract that runs a couple of more years. He like, said the other day, he says, geez, I just hope I don't get fired the way this season is going. I don't think there's any chance of that. I don't either. I think they guys need a quality to, coach. And they just need to find the right kind of personnel. Two or three players make a world of difference for them. Kramer, big hole up the middle, running hard to the 47-yard line. Harrison finally makes the tackle. One other thing about Bobby Ross, I, don't, I have known him for a long time. He's not only an excellent football coach, he's a terrific person. And, and that's what he looks for on his football team. Yes, he looks he for character guys. And you see it in guys like Stan Humphreys, like Junior Seau. Holding. 64. Offense. It's a 10-yard penalty. Second down. 
to Ralph Tam, the backup center, called for the hold, so that big gain will come back for Craver. A lot of second-team guys on the field right now for Mike Shanahan. Bobby Beathard, right? You can't hide. There you are, Bobby. I got you. There he is. Keep an eye on what's going on. Alex Spano, the owner next to him. One of the best personnel men ever to be involved in this league is Bobby Beathard. Lewis with the deep out, too tall for Jeffers. You know, Mike, I like Jeff Lewis coming out of college. Matter of fact, I thought coming out of school, he had the most natural delivery, great feet getting back in the pocket, a lot of quicks. I liked everything he did. And the thing that really impressed me is he protects the football. We saw his stats before, 22 touchdowns, only three interceptions in his, in his senior year out of 316 passes. So he's smart with the football as well. I think this one's got a really bright future. Unfortunately, he plays behind John. Got a national record for the lowest interception rate, one double A. Here comes the blitz. Lewis in trouble. Somehow got out of it. Now he turns into a running back. Lewis to the 42. What a play by the rookie. Young John running yeah. around out there. John thinking the same thing. Watch him dance in the pocket. They bring the blitz. Harrison comes outside. Bush comes. Makes one miss. Makes one, another one miss. Good quickness. Now he just gets around the corner. A little half a straight arm. Lose half your sock. Boy, he took a shot from Harrison at the end of that play, too. The rookie will learn to slide. Yeah, I hope he grows some hair, too. <laughs> Play action. And complete to McCaffrey for about nine. Now they're ruling it incomplete. The same McCaffrey didn't catch it. Of course, we're talking about Lewis playing behind Elway, but we have seen other guys who had to play behind superstar quarterbacks that have come through this year and found a way, like Brad Johnson, uh, who gets the tremendous... Uh, gets the tremendous co uh, contract. He went 66 games before he could get in. That's it. Denver went there. 70. Gerback 39. Mark Brunel, who I think is going to be just an incredible quarterback, had to go 35 games before he got a start. And I think the reason why they've been as effective as they have is because they've had a chance to sit and watch and learn. Play clock was running down. Lewis calls a timeout. 12.09 to go in the game. Chargers by six in San Diego. Jeff Lewis at the helm. Under pressure, Carswell makes the catch up at the 48-yard line. It's going to be about four yards shy of a first down. And it wouldn't be the holidays without that gentleman. Bob Holt, the legendary entertainer, has graced us with his presence tonight here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. Mr. Hope has had a busy day. I saw him in a golf tournament golf earlier today. That's right. He's just zipping around all the big events. Of course, this time of year, he's a very, very close friend of Mr. Spanos. And... This time of year, he used to entertain the troops all over the world. They had done a little song and dance together. Rayleigh Johnson may have been offside. Lewis stopped thinking he was. Then Lewis takes off and has a first down at the 38. Either Rayleigh Johnson got the fastest start in the history of football, or he was offside. You know, that was a quarterback draw, and what Jeff Lewis did was he was patient enough to allow the rush to come and then pick and choose the way he wants to go. Most of the time, when you run a quarterback draw, you want to get there in a hurry. See how he waits? He just hesitates a second. Now, the rush has been set, the holes open up, now you get to explode through. Really a quick run. I'm surprised at how quick he is. Vaughn had bring his running back. Lewis on the roll, Carswell can't get there. Pass just a little wide. Two longest plays of the night belong to Lewis. Runs of 18 and 14 yards. Great teacher, too, in Gary Kubiak. As you mentioned, Mike, a long time back up at John's. Boy, and every time he got a chance to play, it seemed he just played wonderfully. Uh-oh, somebody hit the eggnog a little early. 
There's a person that should not be in white spandex. I've got to be honest with you. There are clothes for people. Those are not the clothes for that person. Lewis unloads. McCaffrey can't get it out of bounds. And there is a marker down. It looked like Don Sass Sassa may have been offside. The scary thing is that probably used to fit. And, and with the number 110, I can <laughs> see what? Oh, enough. Please. <laughs> Ouch. She makes Dennis Rodman look normal. <laughs> Second and five. Play action again by Lewis. Nice patience and got it to Chamberlain. It was like a three-on-two play in basketball. You had Lewis, two receivers, and two defenders. He just waited to see who went which way. And he really did. He bought some time. Just real, like you said, real patient, just moving along, not in a hurry to force it down the field, wait for the linebacker to commit, and then just dump it off. They're going to bring the change in from the far side. The indication is uh, short by the length of the football, but those are not the official chains on that side of the field. I also like what Gary Kubiak and Mike Shanahan are doing with Jeff Lewis. Knowing that Mus uh, Musgrave is hurt, they're giving him a chance not to just come in there and hand the ball off, but they're getting him ready just in case he has to play down the road for him. Moving him in the pocket, let him throw the football, run this quarter just like you would a game. Now, the reason those chains are off on the far side, that is just an estimate from that chain gang. They are looking across the field and trying to pick the best spot. It is not official. Denver with a pretty good drive here. They have reached the San Diego 28-yard line. Lewis straight back this time. Again, McCaffrey with a catch. Flags are down at the line of scrimmage. Thrown right into the middle of the line, and in a holding call, we'll bring it back. Holding. Number 68. Offense. 10-yard penalty. First down. Reggie McElroy, number 68. See him right there on the right part of your screen. He's going to try and pick up the blitz of Gavea late and just gets the old arm out. And has a takedown. A spinner move. A spinner takedown. That'll back him up to the 38-yard line, first and 20. That'll give you a passing lane, I'll tell you that, yes, though. Well. First and 20 for the rookie, Jeff Lewis. Got four receivers to the right side. He goes back to the other side. Completes to Smith, got half of it back to the original line of scrimmage. Plus Montoy made the tackle. I'll tell you what else I like about Jeff Lewis is I like the way he gets rid of the football. The ball comes out real quick. There's no hesitation, and it's a quick release. When you when you've got when you've got decisive routes being run by your receivers, and you get the ball out in a hurry, good position. See how he keeps it up around his chest. No wasted movement. A lot of guys carry it down around the belt. That means it has to come all the way up. By the time you see the receiver open, the ball gets there, he's covered. Second and 10. Again, they flood the right side of the field. Lewis has room to run again. Got a block. Govea still got a shoulder into him at the 24. They need to reach the 18 for a first down. That time Ed McCaffrey wasn't sure what to do, whether to try and run a route, try and throw a block, try and get open. John Perella threw a shoe. He has been a very good player this year for San Diego. Bobby Ross praised him the other day. A guy who just goes out there and works hard every play. The former Buffalo Bill. Third and six. Good 
Here comes the blitz. McCaffrey is open. McCaffrey breaks the tackle and may have the first down. If they give him forward progress, he will at the 16-yard line. You know, that's just typical Ed McCaffrey. He caught that thing three yards short of the first down marker, knows exactly where he has to get to. Reads the blitz, coming off, see, right away. He's four yards short. He's got to get over the 25. There it is, or the 15, excuse me. Gets down, first down. Oh, look at this. Here comes Junior. Game is now on the line again with 7.45 to go, and they can't keep him out. Vaughn Hebron is the back deep in the eye. Lewis in the flat to Smith. Got Willie Clark to give up about four yards before he shoved him out of bounds. Junior Seau still limping, obviously, on that right leg, which he injured early in the game. Seven tackles, two fumble recoveries. He's batted down four and has hit the quarterback twice. All of that on one leg. Not bad. There's just no quitting that guy. None. Second and three. The Chargers trying to finish at 500. Keep it on the ground, trying to get the first down with Hebron. Mike, you mentioned getting to 500. Eight and eight is very important for a player when sure. there's nothing left after that. You've got a long six months to think about the last game you played in and being on a losing football team. That's what it means. It means, we okay, we're not losing. We didn't lose. Seven and nine, you're a losing football team. Third and short again on this drive, and now another injury for the Chargers. This is Govea, the middle linebacker, who tried to limp off the field and just fell. And this drive has been a very impressive one. Come alive in the second, both teams have committed three big turnovers that resulted in 20 of the 26 combined points. Govea finally able to leave the field with help. He just gets off. They just bend that knee back. Ouch. Dwayne Gordon will check in for him, number 52, on third and a yard. This drive started with 33 seconds to go in the third quarter. Lewis throws for the end zone, intercepted by Harrison. What a play by the third-year safety, his fifth in the first mistake for Lewis as he throws the interception in the end zone San Diego will start from the 19 keep it on the ground with Freddie Bradley for maybe a yard that was a good drive though by Jeff Lewis excellent well the thing is is he you know Rodney Harrison's got cars well covered and down around the goal line, you, you can't hang it up. You just, you've got to, it's got to get there in a heartbeat, or the guy's got to be running towards a, a boundary, then you can put a little air under. Kurt Govea being taken to the locker room after injuring that knee. The drive for Denver, 9 minutes, 21 seconds, went 72 yards, and they get nothing out of it. Humphrey, short set, throws, won't get much out of that. Excellent coverage by the rookie, Torrey James, as they threw a bullet into Charlie Jones, the rookie from Fresno State. Nice bounce back by Humphreys tonight after a very rugged start. Well, you know, the thing that you want to be as a quarterback, no matter what's going on around you, is you have to try and remain some sense of consistency, and that's what he did. Terrell Fletcher comes in on third and a yard. Humphreys to throw for it. Throws short, completes to Jones. Breaks the tackle. Jones out of bounds at the 45 by Corey James. I remember the touchdown pass that Charlie Jones caught earlier in the game? This is the same exact route. You run him out on a little angle out, bring him back down underneath, let him make the play. Watch on the left side. See how he starts back in. Now it's just a question of a good burst and turns the speed on. 
Got away from Randy Hilliard. First down, Chargers, 4.46 left to go in the game. They're protecting a six-point lead. Bradley back in as the tailback. And he'll get the carry. Denver closes on him, no game. And now Denver is going to have to think about start using its timeouts very shortly. Coming up next, Sports Center. Dan Patrick, Keith Olbermann standing by. They'll get you caught up on the day in sports. The Jaguars with a miracle finish to make the playoffs. Our conversation with George Seifert and a milestone for the great Brett Hall. That, of course, will be followed by Primetime, hosted by Chris Berman. We invite you to stay tuned for those. A lot of Charger fans still on hand tonight to see if their club can go to 8-8. Eight eight. Second and 10, approaching four minutes. Play action by Humphrey. Nice throw on the run. Beautiful toss to Tony Martin. Martin going to his first Pro Bowl this year, coming into the game more than 1,100 yards receiving. You want to push this up the field against Darius Johnson? See how, he, see how he concentrates. He doesn't tip it off. At the last minute, he makes that plant and then comes back out and makes the reception. 3.58 left. Martin, who languished in Miami and then blossomed in San Diego. Back to the ground with Bradley. They sealed the left side, and Freddie Bradley pounds for six, maybe Bradley, seven yards before Allen Aldridge makes the tackle. The linebackers for Denver, who have played so well all year long, have been relatively quiet tonight. Well, they have, but, you know, when, when they got Bill Romanowski, by putting him outside at what's called the will linebacker, the weak side linebacker, they, it allowed them to move Allen Aldrich inside. Now, Aldrich has a lot of speed, 6'1", 245, but really can move. Now they've got three linebackers in Mobley, Aldrich, and Romanowski that can all run as well as be run stoppers. Second and four, Bradley. No room up the middle. Tim Hout, number 37, and closed from the safety spot. There's Romo. Stop on number 37. Tremendous acquisition as a free agent pickup. Five NFC championship games. Leading tackler this year. Two Super Bowl okay. wins. Clock running, 2.54 left to go. He describes it, this football team, the, the Denver Broncos defense. He was telling Coach Robinson, there are no egos on this defense. They're a very unselfish group. Everybody does what they're supposed to do. And there's a guy that's really come on and made an impact, John Mobley. Third, third and four. Fletcher in the game. Humphrey throwing incomplete. Dropped by Deems May would have been another first down, and that's the story of Stan Humphrey's night. He's had at least a half a dozen drops. Number 25, Darius Johnson, defending for the Broncos. He has really put the ball where he wants all night. I mean, and, you know, he, the only way it makes it easier is if they have handles on him. And that's how much he misses Alfred Papuno, really. Absolutely. And Papunu was playing brilliantly. Uh, Papunu, Courtney Hall, we talked about it, Mike. Uh, you know, Dwayne Harper on the other side of the ball. When you don't have those playmakers, it's hard to win games. Rod Smith back waiting on the punt. They come after Bennett, don't get there. Flags are down. And they may have been able to kill it inside the five. Now they're saying it's a touchback, and now we'll check the penalty. was a fourth and four if it's offside it would be a first down as they came after the punter and that's exactly what it is san diego will get a new set of downs with 221 to go in the game talk about great coaching jobs mike shanahan who was fired by the raiders worked his magic in san francisco came to denver and has done an exceptional job here. Five yard panel. Five yard panel. That's a first down. The number is 34. The thing about Mike Shanahan tonight, he wanted to rest his starters, get them a little bit of action, make sure they were sharp. He'd love to have won the game, but if he doesn't, 
Hey, he accomplished his purpose. Keep him healthy. Keep him healthy. There's Courtney on the left and Alfred Caputo on the right, guarding the garbage can. Bradley will be taken down. I guess if you can't play, it's a good thing to guard the garbage can. They will not have all tight ends in the NFL. In fact, Carolina head coach Dom Capers has instructed Collins to throw the ball to Walls, even if he looks covered, because the former 49er tight end will somehow find a way to make the big catch. That's the big reason for their offensive success. When that's got to give a quarterback a lot of confidence, too, when you throw it up there and you know your guy is more than likely to come down with it. Yes, it does, as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, a guy named Art Monk. Art Monk, you're player. right. Third and 15. Humphreys to throw again. Here comes the blitz. They don't get there. Humphreys to Fletcher. Trying to break tackles and can't. He's brought down at the 35-yard line, but inbounds. Rondell Jones and a timeout called. The boxing twin. Pretending to be busy while we're on the air. The Chargers have decided to punt in the 34-yard line. I think it's a good decision. Fourth down and 10. It's too long to try it. I think the field goal would be about 52. This way you can pin the Broncos back. Otherwise, if the field goal is no good, you give them the ball at about their own 42-yard line. But you can't kick it in the end zone, Mike. That's the only thing. Bennett straight up trying to hang it. Fair catch stayed by Smith at the 9-yard line. So the Broncos will have to go 91 yards in a minute 37. This game aside, Joe, what's your evaluation of the Broncos' chances not only to make it to the Super Bowl, but maybe to win it? I think they have I think they have a chance to win it all. I really believe this is the first year that the AFC has a legitimate shot to win a world championship. Talking to the Green uh, to the Denver people, they'd like another shot at Green Bay. And, you know, you, you, you almost have to throw that one out because John Elway wasn't there. And he is such a big part of it. Michael Dean didn't play tonight. But uh, I think that Denver, particularly the fact that they have home field all through the playoffs, I think gives them an edge. Lewis scrambling around, gets it to Craver for a short gain up to the 16-yard line. Have only one timeout left. Mr. Muscle, better known as Shannon Sharp. Had a brilliant year. Lewis to Craver can't handle this one. Lou Bush was there on the coverage. That'll bring up a third and four. This will be the end of our 10th year of Sunday Night Football. It's hard for me to believe. You and I have been together nine. Yeah, it's remarkable. I think I've enjoyed it's been it, too. Fun it's been too, a fun year, yeah. What a great crew we work with. Great bunch of people. Quite candidly, I think the best in the business. Absolutely, and they work so hard. We think we work hard sometimes, but not compared to them. Yeah, I don't think you work very hard. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You enjoy it too much. Oh, I do that. Lewis trying to make something happen on third down. And Harrison with a safety blitz gets him on the sack at the 10. Hey, Rodney Harrison has made some big plays tonight. We've seen Junior all over the football field from the linebacker position. But Rodney Harrison has been up supporting the run quickly. He's been back intercepting passes. Now we see him on a blitz on the outside making the play. Bobby Ross loves him. He'll come from down here. There's number 37 moving in. Does a good job of defeating the block of Aaron Craver, and then just stays with it. Denver has now used its last timeout. They'll be facing a fourth and ten from the ten. See, you, you could see in Jeff Lewis the youth of playing the quarterback position at this level. A lot of young quarterbacks, all they see is the rush. You don't see down the field. You have to feel the rush and look down the field. And that's the that's what you get once you play. That's what makes, I think, John Elway so effective. He feels people around him, moves around, and then makes a decision. Do I run or do I throw it down the field? Last gasp for the Broncos. John Elway says, boy, 14 and 2 sounds a lot better than 13 and 3. They'll need a miracle now. Lewis airs one out for Smith out of bounds. They'll lose the ball on down with 57 seconds to go. Bobby Ross, who has never had a losing season, said he wanted this. 
badly. And he is now on the verge of having it because Denver can't stop the clock. The Chargers will finish at 8-8. Eight and eight. It's not, it's not a consolation, but it, 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 it gives you a good feeling with Christmas coming up this week. And I think for Mike Shanahan, he's got to be thrilled now that the last three games of the season are over. Now he can sit down and start plotting his course through the playoffs of what he wants to do. Because once you, can, once you clinch it, the only thing that you, occupies your mind is guys getting hurt. Exactly. And, and you, you don't want to sit him. You can't sit him down for four weeks. No. You have to let your starters play. Boy, there's, there's, a, there's a courage award right there. Junior Seau with one of the most courageous performances we've seen. Hobbling around on a leg and a half, making play after play. Literally had to be carried off the field. At one point, they sent the cart out for him to take him into the locker room. He sent it back. Yes, he did. And then came out and played remarkably. Of course, if this is any kind of an omen for Denver, the last 20 Super Bowl winners were 17-3 and three in their final regular season game. Well, they want to be the fourth. They may not be 18, but they just as soon be fourth. Mike Shanahan and Bobby Ross, two guys with a lot of respect for each other and respect from the rest of the coaches and players around the league. Our final score, the San Diego Chargers 16, the Denver Broncos 10. Coming up next, Sports Center with Dan Patrick. For years, snowboarders, knuckle draggers, and skiers have shared an...